Now, from the very first moment you saw the Italian Mustache Man in his platforming Super Mario adventure, you could see the iconic Super Mushroom by his side. Over time, this power-up was seen more and more, got different roles, and was everywhere in general. So, how did it evolve in terms of gameplay, design, use, and story? Well, let's find out. The Super Mushroom has to be the very first power-up you encounter in the entire franchise. Using it causes small Mario to turn into a super form, allowing him to smash through bricks and take an extra hit from enemies. Now the idea for this power-up was originally believed to have been inspired by the cake that Alice eats in Alice Adventures in Wonderland that makes her grow after having been shrunk by a potion. However, Shigeru Miyamoto later corrected himself, saying that this was a misunderstanding. It was actually inspired by the concept of mushrooms being associated with magical worlds in general, like the Wonderland of Alice Adventures in Wonderland and the Mushroom Kingdom. Now regardless of where it came from or what influenced it, this piece of fungi became became one of the most iconic items in video game history, and is almost as well known as Mario himself. Together with the Goomba and Koopa Troopa, they were the first things you would see in the game. Now the reason why they added it to the game is quite logical. Without it, the whole experience would become a lot more stressful. In your small state, it only takes one hit after all. So this power-up was 100% needed in order to make it more balanced and player-friendly. And this became their role from this point onward, giving you another chance when you mess up. However, this isn't the only type of mushroom you can get in the game, because there was also a green type that gave you an extra life. So all around, finding a mushroom was a good thing, and it would always benefit the player. However, this is something Nintendo noticed, and so they came up with a new type soon after, that would actually try to trick the player. Because just like real life, some mushrooms are edible and good for you, while others are poisonous. And this goes for the purple mushroom as well, because it's a harmful version. Usually, they have the opposite effect of a super mushroom, and while they are sometimes called a power-up, they are actually more like a trap. Nintendo had established that all mushrooms are a power-up that will help you get through any challenge. So they took advantage of this by adding a surprise for the player that would also make the game more difficult. They have even done this with other elements seen in the game as well, like the question mark blocks by filling them with a nasty surprise. The reason why they do this is so that the game doesn't become predictable or bland. You want to tickle the player with something interesting every now and then. And breaking expectations is the best way of doing that. Now after this time, no new mushroom power-ups were introduced for a long time. However, in the Mario Kart series and Super Mario World game, a new one was seen. Sort of. Because originally, a flying golden mushroom would have appeared in Super Mario World, but was removed for unknown reasons. However, we do see it in the Mario Kart series, where it acts as the ultimate multi-boost item. Like a super mushroom, but a million times better. However, it never made it into the main series. Well, later on with the new Super Mario Bro series, but here it has the same role as a 1-up. Well actually, those games had a big impact on the mushroom power-ups, because with the very first game, they introduced two new types. The Mega Mushroom, which temporarily enlarges the user, allowing them to walk over and destroy everything in their path, including the largest and most powerful enemies. And its counterpart, the Mini Mushroom, which shrinks you, gives you the ability to enter tiny war pipes, perform floaty jumps, and run across water. Unfortunately, one hit will cause a Mario brother to lose a life, and ground pounds are required to damage enemies and bosses. So these are exact opposites. One makes you a mighty giant that gives you the power to destroy everything but takes away your mobility, while the other makes you fast, agile and small, but extremely weak. This whole situation is actually similar to the poison and super mushroom seen at the very start of the series. However, the dynamic this time is not of good and bad, but actually different playstyles and needs. The Mega Mushroom is there to empower you and give the player some fun with barging through a level they would normally go through slowly, while the Mini Mushroom is used for more precise jobs and requires you to be careful since you're gone in one hit. Both of them create a new scenario that requires a completely new approach compared to the normal Super Mario levels. That's the cool thing about both of these. Something like this isn't seen a lot in the series. 
A fire flower, for example, doesn't change that much about your behavior in the levels. So with this, Nintendo once again created a cool twist to add to the game in order to keep the players interested. Now, so far, we have only been talking about 2D side-scroller games because that's where most of the mushroom power-ups were seen in the start. However, when the 3D game for the Wii came around the corner, things changed. In Super Mario Galaxy, there are three new ones that all have a completely different effect, but at least have one thing in common. They transform Mario drastically. The spring mushroom which turns you into a human spring, the bee mushroom which turns you into a bee, and the boo mushroom that turns you into... you guessed it, a boo! Now all of these aren't really related to each other, they just change Mario into something new with completely different abilities that the levels are built around. The older ones like the Super and Mega Mushroom were all based around changing your size and how much damage you could take, but this time around the transformations aren't about that at all. It's all about different beings now, a bit like how the captures work in Super Mario Odyssey. Each gives you a new ability in order to solve problems or challenges at hand. With the B one you get flying challenges, the boo is all about getting past obstacles, and the spring will give you the ability to jump a lot better. Now this is mostly Nintendo introducing weird mechanics for the player to have fun with, before dumping it after a bit. They basically slowly introduce it, increase difficulty over time, present a big challenge at the end, and then they throw it away. However, it's still interesting to see Nintendo use the power-ups for such a role, and it doesn't end here because Nintendo came up with one more type of mushroom power-up that's extremely different from all the old ones, yet again seen on the Wii. The Propeller Mushroom, which lets the player fly through the air, spinning like a propeller until gently floating to the ground. The descent can be delayed if the player shakes the Wii remote while falling, and if the power-up is left stationary, it will fly out of the stage. This is yet again a power-up that's extremely different from anything they have done before. It certainly does something interesting, mostly the fact that you can go up and down extremely fast with this power-up. It's similar to the Spring Mushroom in a way, but easier to control. And this is actually one of the main power-ups in New Super Mario Bros. Wii. Another interesting thing it does is open the door for more exploration. Because you can get high up quite easily now, opening that part of the level up for you. So all of a sudden, it's not just going from left to right, and that's about it. There's more up there now. Besides that, seeing the shift from size and HP based increases to entire transformations is certainly an interesting choice. It gave Nintendo more options and creative freedom, but they kind of lost their personality thanks to that. Back in the day, they had one distinct role that everyone knew about after playing the game once. But in later games, this identity was lost. A mushroom power-up could be anything, not just HP and size related. It might have been a better idea to not take this iconic power-up and change it in such a way. And Super Mario Maker took this a step further even. They introduced a mystery, weird and big mushroom. The first transforms Mario into one of the costumes that can be collected in the game itself, the second turns you into some sort of weird looking skinny Mario that originates from a bug in the game, and the last one changes the look of the game to an older style and turns some enemies into Mario versions. Clearly as time went on things got crazier and crazier, because this doesn't fit with the original purpose and idea of the power-up. Sure, they're fun little additions that almost every Super Mario fan will love, including me, but it all just changed a little bit too much. So with it being in such a weird in-between spot now, what will happen next? Well, we don't really know, but time will tell. Thanks for watching everybody, I hope you enjoyed, be sure to click subscribe, click the little bell button, watch more videos, give me all your money, p donate on Patreon, I don't even have a Patreon. Um, do all those things, thank you.